Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from the YouTube channel Redolescence and I want to start things off by welcoming you back to my channel. I really do appreciate the support and the consistent viewership. It means a lot to me. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at a celebrity scent. This one was released in 2018 and it's by the singer Ariana Grande and this one is called Cloud. So stay tuned. So to start things off, this fragrance was released in 2018, as I said previously. This is a celebrity scent, and I think we've seen a lot of celebrity scents on the market. I know Nicki Minaj has her own, Ariana Grande has her own, uh, Adam Levine has his own, so on and so forth, Shawn Mendes being another artist. And we see that a lot of singers, songwriters are coming out with their own celebrity perfumes, Lady Gaga being another one, the list goes on and on. And so this one, of course, I'm not typically into celebrity scents. I will admit that there are some that I really, really enjoy. Enjoy. The most recent Shawn Mendes has been really nice. The Adam Levine one that is in the shape of a microphone has this sort of fruity, musky quality about it that I really enjoy. And so when this one came out, of course, the bottle is really unique. It's kind of cool. Of course, it does cater towards a younger female demographic. Uh, but nonetheless, I wanted to check this one out because there was a lot of talk online that this fragrance smelled like a very popular and more expensive scent from the house of Maison Francis Kirk John, or I should just say Maison Francis Kirk John, because Maison means house. And this one is called Baccarat Rouge 540. Now, I attended the workshop for this fragrance. It was a master class. The perfumer was there. He spent a couple hours of his time talking about how the fragrance development came about, how it was pieced together, how precious the raw materials are inside. And he actually broke it down and we smelled the individual raw materials. And so I'm very familiar with this scent. I even want to thank the perfumer for for taking about a half hour out of his time to talk to me and have a really detailed, interesting conversation. It means a lot to me. And so I'm excited to tell you if I think this fragrance has any resemblance to Baccarat Rouge 540, or even if it's not a close clone to Baccarat Rouge 540, is it a fragrance that's still worth picking up for $40 or whatever I paid for it at Ulta? So definitely stay tuned for that, but let's start things off by taking a closer look at the presentation. So the presentation for this one is kind of cool. It has this incandescent uh, reflective coating on the box here. It has a picture of the artist on the back, really nice. It just has a picture of a cloud here and the same design that is on the front of the box is also uh, the silhouette of the cap, which I think is pretty cool. It actually comes in like this little stand or podium, whatever you want to call it. It says Ariana Grande on it. Nothing at the bottom and your actual information, if you're looking to validate your purchase or authenticate your purchase rather, will be on the bottom of the bottle here. Now the cap does click into place. So you can pick this one up from the cap, no qualms there. And the distribution on the atomizer is a little bit narrow, so make sure to spray from a distance. Let's continue with the smell. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, or actually let's backtrack a little bit, as soon as you spray the fragrance, if you happen to smell the nozzle after the fragrance was recently sprayed, yes, you are going to get hints and remnants of Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirk John. However, after you give it time to settle and you smell the test strip or you smell your hand or wherever it is that you happen to apply the fragrance, you'll see that it doesn't really smell so much like Baccarat Rouge anymore. It actually goes in a different direction. There's a lot of notes in here. Obviously, there's um, a lot of fantasy notes in here. There's whipped cream and there's spun sugar and vanilla and coconut. And yes, indeed, there are a lot of lactonic and butyric notes in here that kind of give off the impression of dairy. And so it has this creamy vibe going on in there. I almost want to say I get a little bit of tonka bean in the base as well. But what you really get from this one is a really creamy vanilla. It's actually a really nice smell. It's very gourmand and decadent, very sweet and food-like and confectionery. And then you also get this coconut vibe in there. And I, I don't know what aroma chems are used in here, whether it's aldehyde C13 or one of the gammas, octalactone gamma, heptalactone gamma. But there's definitely something going on in here that gives off that sweet, almost Baccarat Rouge-esque vibe. When you do a side-by-side, -side, as I did with not only the um, original one, but also the X-Tray, it doesn't smell like Baccarat Rouge uh, for the side-by-side. I can see why somebody would throw it into the same category. Once you actually spend a little bit of time with it, you'll see that this one is, 
I would say just as sweet as Baccarat Rouge, but the sweetness kind of goes in a different direction. You know, one of the adjectives that's usually used is juvenile. And I think a juvenile sweetness in the perfume industry would be something like Pink Sugar by Aqualina, because it really just smells overly sugary. It smells like a candy cane or something like that. And I think this one, it is very sweet. And so one may use that adjective in describing the scent, but I think there's a lot of redeeming factors about this one too. There are some floral nuances in here. I know lavender is used as an ingredient in here. I don't really pick up on a whole lot of lavender. And whatever lavender is used in there, obviously it doesn't smell like Caron Porunom, which is like a very natural smelling lavender scent albeit it doesn't really matter, uh, it doesn't really last that long. But with this one, yes, it has those sweet properties, it has those gourmand confectionery nuances about it, but if you are purchasing this as a clone to uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirkjohn. I know there are a lot of clones out there that you can buy in place of those. If you're looking for something that's not entirely the same, something that does things a little bit differently, and you want to be surprised by a celebrity scent, I would say definitely go out there and check this one out. Also, if you happen to be a fan of the celebrity herself, then you might also want to consider picking this one up as well. Or if you have a family member or a friend who is a huge fan of her music or just her in general, you know, they have posters all over the wall in their bedroom, then definitely pick this one up for them. I think they will really enjoy it. Uh, is this one that I would personally wear? Yeah, I think so, believe it or not. Um, although some of the sweetness would make somebody say that it's childish or juvenile or perhaps even a bit feminine. You know, there are a lot of sweet masculine fragrances out there and I think we've seen that a lot of the fragrances on the designer side of the perfume industry have actually started going in a sweet direction, which is okay for some, but there's still a good balance of the more masculine, mossy, woodsy, resinous, smoky ones still on the market. So it's not like they're oversaturating the market. But I think this one, uh, you definitely have to be in the mood for it. When I have a sweet tooth, when I have the craving to wear something that is perhaps a little bit sweeter, I would probably reach for this one. Um, had I known that it would not have been as close of a clone to Baccarat Rouge 540, would I still have purchased it? Yeah, just to make this video, but not really for myself. And so I do think that this is a great fragrance. Uh, I think I'm, actually I know I'm really impressed for Ariana Grande putting out this scent. Uh, once again, I purchased my bottle at Ulta, so I'm gonna leave links down below if you are interested in checking it out for yourself. I actually ended up seeing a cheaper bottle on eBay recently for like 28 bucks, so you can look around definitely, and you can find this one for a much more discounted price, but all in all, I think it's a solid scent. Great release for 2018, very light, lighthearted, whimsical, and the overall vibe and the smell and the way that it's pieced together is actually very well done. So let's go ahead and continue with my overall assessment. First up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I was initially worried that this was going to be an outright clone, or I should say there were times when I was even excited that there was this was going to be a clone because it would offer me something to wear as an alternative to Baccarat Rouge 540. Unfortunately, is not a clone, but then it also holds its own weight in terms of being an original release, which I think is important in the industry as well. And the overall smell is very pleasant. It's not as sweet as Pink Sugar by Aqualina or some of those overly juvenile confectionery scents, but it is pretty sweet. So you have to give it a try in stores whenever it comes around to Macy's or Sephora or some of the mo more popular uh, designer stores. I know there's no Ulta by where I live. And so I kind of did have to blind buy this one. But if you do have access to it, definitely sample before you buy. Do not blind buy. In terms of longevity, I got about six to seven hours, kind of on the lower end. So given the concentration, it would fall within average territory. Projection was good for the first hour, maybe hour and a half. And then it did start to sit a little bit closer to the skin. I don't think it ever radiated beyond an arm's length. And so it kind of has like this intimate personal bubble. But I think the performance is actually pretty good for this one. It wasn't underwhelming. In terms of versatility, I think this one definitely is geared towards somebody who's a little bit younger. I think this one would work really well in the intermediary season, so fall and spring, not in the dead of summer, not in the dead of winter, just because of the harsh climate conditions. And I think in terms of occasions, this is one that I would just wear casually. So I wouldn't wear this one to work. I wouldn't wear this one in a suit and tie. It kind of just doesn't give off that professional demeanor about it. And last, the presentation. I think it's kind of quirky. I think the presentation is kind of cool. So my final verdict for this one is 
I like it. You know, it's a fun, playful, cheerful, down-to-earth, whimsical scent. It is on the sweet side. It is catered towards a younger demographic so definitely you be the deciding factor if you want to purchase this one for yourself again it's not sweet like some of the other more childish fragrances on the market but it does have like that 50 percent dna of baccarat rouge which kind of keeps it interesting all in all i think ariana grande and her team did a really great job in bringing this fragrance to market and so kudos to her and her team so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was my review of the new Cloud by Ariana Grande. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And that includes fragrance reviews just like this one, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, and a whole lot of other fragrance-related content. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.